Wake up call received. I'm Jessica Denson, and this is Lights On. Underestimate Joe Biden at your peril. Last night, the president knocked it out of the park with his State of the Union address. Over 32 million people watched as President Biden both shook us to wake us up to the gravity of the moment and made us proud to be Americans again. Donald Trump and his domestic enemy apologists would have us sometimes forget what real patriotism feels like. Well, I for one felt it last night and what absolute perfect timing. It really is all on us now. This week started off with a complete abdication of duty in contrast with that beautiful display of duty from the president last night uh, by the justices of the Supreme Court who allowed an insurrectionist who is banned by the letter of the constitution from holding office to remain on the ballot as a presidential candidate. History will not judge them kindly and it frankly may only take a few months you know, a certain day in January to find out just what a terrible mistake they made. In the meantime, the derelict party we have come to know as the GOP is lining up behind their domestic terrorist, sexual abuser, and financial fraud. On Wednesday, Mitch McConnell endorsed Trump for president, the man who has made racist attacks on his wife and who he once called on to be criminally prosecuted. Surprise, surprise. I, for one, was not. And Nikki Haley ended her campaign with a lame call for Trump to earn the support of her voters. What a coward. I am slightly disappointed that she's not the nominee so we can point out what a disingenuous, self-serving, and frankly dangerous political hack she is. You know, there's a book called Anatomy, The Anatomy of Fascism, and Robert O. Paxton writes in it, the fascist route to power has always passed through cooperation with conservative elites. Well, the good news is that Haley's voters are twice as likely to vote for Biden as Trump. And I think after last night, uh, Biden will be the one earning more of their votes, not Donald Trump. But to top off the nihilism of this conservative, quote unquote, conservative party, not really conservative at all, today the RNC elected Laura Trump as its co-chair. Yes, the one who promises to make sure every single penny goes to her father and his legal bills. This is the party who threw out a platy part. This is the party who threw out a party platform in 2020 in favor of unwavering allegiance to whatever pleases Donald Trump. So again, no real surprise here. But please, do not ever call this party Christian. This idolatrous worship of an orange calf has no semblance to Christianity. They're pagan nationalists, maybe but definitely not Christian nationalist. We have a great show for you today. My guest has been quoted by the president himself after showing what real duty and honor look like on January 6th. He's been a guest here before, and we're so happy to have him back. Retired Capitol Police Sergeant Aquilino Gonell. Aquilino, welcome back to Lights On. Well, thank you for having me back, Jessica. It's my pleasure. Um, we were just talking before we started about uh, the State of the Union last night. And, you know, one of my favorite quotes was um, when he called out uh, the duty of that Congress to defend against enemies, foreign and domestic. Maybe we can just play that clip and then talk on the other side. 1941, Franklin Roosevelt came to this chamber to speak to the nation. And he said, I address you at a moment unprecedented in the history of the Union. Hitler was on the march. War was raging in Europe. President Roosevelt's purpose was to wake up Congress and alert the American people that this was no ordinary time. Freedom and democracy were under assault in the world. Tonight, I come to this same chamber to address the nation. Now, it's we who face an unprecedented moment in the history of the Union. And yes, my purpose tonight is to wake up the Congress and alert the American people that this is no ordinary moment either. Not since President Lincoln and the Civil War have freedom and democracy been under assault at home as they are today. What makes our moment rare? So that was actually the wake-up call clip. We'll play. We'll play the one um, where he calls out their oaths. But um, what did you? What were your sentiments after seeing uh, that State of the Union last night, Aquilino? 
Um, I think he was very strong in, in terms of uh, his message. Uh, he was coherent and very authentic. Um, you know, uh, there's a lot of people that want to make his age uh, an issue, but guess what? The other guy, it's a little younger and makes a lot of more gaff than he does and is less co coherent. So, uh, you know, the message was for everybody. Uh, I think that for a home and abroad audience, um, and he was right to point out uh, the the threats to our democracy from home and, uh, and abroad. Uh, you know, I remember January 6th when I was defending the, the Capitol from the internal uh, threats that it is uh, many of the people who support Donald Trump, uh, the former president himself, wanted to overthrow our government. And to my dismay and disbelief, uh, he now is the uh, nominee to, to return to power. And that entails him getting classified information, uh, which, uh, as we all know, uh, took it to Mar a Lago and you know, had it open, in an open space for people and guests from his resort to, to view it, uh, potentially uh, damaging our national security. So there's a lot of things that, that uh, I think uh, the former uh, Republican Party uh, used to be to stand up for. Now they are espousing uh, themselves with the former president to um, downplay the events of January 6th, downplay uh, everything that it, it resembles truth uh, for the political game. Yeah, they really are. Um, I think the word I used in the open nihilist really def defines this, these group of people right now. I mean, nothing is nothing to them. Um, but you were there. You lived this in living color um, on January 6, 2021. And I want to, we're live, live today. And Aquilino has um, been very generous, as our guests have been doing recently, and offered to answer your live questions at the end of the show. So um, if you have questions that you would, would like answered, definitely um, prepare and, you know, get, get your minds working as to what you would like to ask Aquilino. And we will um, pose some questions to him at the end. So. But, um, you know, as as this was going on last night, I was really I I agree. It was such a strong performance. It really, you know, countered all of the critics who say that, you know, Biden is too old and he can't perform. And they're they're tripping over themselves right now, trying to figure out how he pulled this off in such a beautiful, um, clear way. I mean, this is obviously who he is, but they try to portray him as this. Um, you know, man who's losing his wits, and that's not who but, the guy is. You know, so. you know what was funny is that half of the people that say that he's too old, they are the same age as him, and he, at least he, at least he's the president, and he's running the country. Uh, what, what, what are they running? Are they running behind Donald Trump? Uh, yeah. Donald, Trump Donald Trump is running in a four uh, in a golf car rather than on a bicycle like Biden does. So he has a four wheeler, and Biden has a two. So which one's more? difficult to do and you know uh, choreographing the whole thing like you know it's easier to get in a on a car and drive but it's you have to stay balanced on a bicycle you have to be able to pedal and you know or at least stretch like uh, I think Biden has a a picture of him stretching at the beach when do you see Donald Trump doing that you know let us yeah. never can we never see Donald Trump stretching at a beach please please <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you know, on a serious note, uh, I think he was right to uh, highlight some of the uh, nonsense that the Republicans uh, party uh, point out usually on, on for for their uh, followers to 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 parrot because you know the border uh, the issue they had an agreement and they they Donald Trump told them not to to sign it because that potentially will help them. Uh, Health care, reproductive rights. So there's a lot of things that they say, you know, social security. There's a lot of things that um, the Republican Party say that they don't want to do publicly, but then they are doing it behind the scene. Uh, and that's that's a very uh, conflating in the same at the same time, very deceptive of them. Yeah. Uh, like when uh, 
uh, Mike, uh, speaking uh, of the House, Mike Johnson says, uh, we want to be transparent to with the American people uh, when releasing the uh, tapes from, from January 6th. In the same sentence, he says, transparency, we are the part of the rule of law. And by the way, let's, let's block, let's blur the footage, uh, the, the faces of those uh, insurrectionists, the rioters, so the FBI and the Department of Justice cannot identify them and prosecute them. But they are the party of rule of law and law and order, which is total BS. Oh, yeah, and they, by the way, they just defunded, uh, proposed to defund the Department of Justice, the FBI, and a couple of other uh, 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 law enforcement agency. So who's defunding the police again now? Yeah, absolutely. No, they've totally um, abandoned any any principle that they allegedly or supposedly stood for um, in favor of bowing down to this God that they have, this false God of Donald Trump. Um, but yeah, absolutely. I mean, you point out how the the notion that they could be about law and order is just a complete joke at this point. And I saw that you tweeted out a picture of um, Representative Troy Nels. Um, he's a representative uh, of Texas. He's wearing this shirt last night that says never surrender, which is really quite hilarious considering it was taken on the day that Donald Trump surrendered to have his mugshot taken. Um, but Right next to it was also this video of Representative Troy Nels on January 6th, and he had quite a different sentiment that day. Maybe we could play it for, for everybody's memory. Okay, 30 years. Would you? Huh? And I've never had people like this. Say again. I've been a law enforcement in Texas for 30 years. Talk a little louder. That's because you've never seen corruption like we have seen this last month. I'm ashamed. And I'm ashamed of my Congress people. They don't even stand up for it. They're giving away my grandchildren and your grandchildren's freedom. If you missed it there, he was saying, I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed to the rioters. No shame today or to, or yesterday, huh? Um, I think that's three years away from the fear that he felt on that day and uh, three years away from Donald Trump telling him what to do. Uh, on January 6th, Donald Trump didn't tell him to be scared, to tell those people to be ashamed of, of, of themselves uh, because he, he was scared. Uh, and just like Mitch McConnell, you said uh, early on, to begin with, um, he endorsed Donald Trump. Yep. You know, this is the same guy who, on the uh, after the second impeachment, said that the president was liable and should face the court, uh, in, in you know civil courts. Um, and now that that he's been prosecuted by civil courts, now he said, well, we shouldn't uh, prosecute the for a, a former president. Um, and this is the same guy who said. Uh, we can't prosecute him because he's out the door two weeks away from leaving uh, uh, power. Now the same guy is the leading candidate to potentially go back to in office. And I, I was waiting for him to come up with the terminology or, or the press or uh, uh, contouring that he does to justify how can he uh, support the same guy who tried to kill them all. Uh, and the only reason why they made it to safety was because of the effort that myself and my colleagues did on January 6th. But um, Mitch McConnell, he, he has a, he, he's complicit on all the, this thing that happened because he could have just uh, helped convict them uh, in the Senate. Now the Supreme Court, like you said, mentioned earlier, the Supreme Court uh, digress to Congress. But guess what? When he was impeached, Ms. McConnell told his um, uh, caucus, his, uh, all the, the other senators on his party, don't prosecute and let the civil court uh, do their job. Do me a favor. So he asked for political favor and had to convince him. And now the same court uh, is referring to send that case back to the Senate and the House, so they could do, you know, in order for them to pro process uh, his misconduct. And that's very uh, shameful on them. But then again, they don't have any shame uh, whatsoever. 
Yeah, it really is shameful. I, we did a special episode with um, the litigants, one of the lawyers who we've had many time on lights on, Donald Sherman from Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington, who is the group that brought that case in Colorado and one of the Republican plaintiffs. I highly suggest everybody go and watch it because they really talk about um, the pretzels. And I actually used your word pretzels that the Supreme Court justices um, contorted themselves in to uh, reverse that case, how it is not consistent with Section 3 and the letter of the law. Um, and like you said, Aquilino, it sends this back to Congress, um, which has shown the body well, of Congress has shown itself completely inept. At well, there's no appetite for them to hold them accountable because they are, they are they have become, if you look at last night, they were all dressed like he does. Uh, you know, a, a red long uh, tie and a white shirt and a suit. You know that that's exactly just like they 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 kind of like the minions, you know, um, yeah. and, and carrying water for them. They try to say last night that the uh, Biden speech was political. Okay, guess what? It's a political event anyway. Oh and, my god! And, and look, you want to give me a break? They wanted to point uh, uh, the speech to be political. Who was wearing a uh, MAGA hat on the yeah. House floor? You know. Per the, the the chamber rules, not even police officers are allowed to wear hats in there because I worked that chamber many many times, you know. And, and she should be disciplined for not following the uh, the court uh, and and not, um, and and should receive a ethic complaint uh, for that as well. But then again, I'm not there. That's on them. Uh, but you know, like I mentioned in my book, American Shield, a lot there, there's a there's a, a lot of certain things, certain individuals that um, they are complicit on what happened on January 6, and yet they still um, uh, in power. They still running the government. I said they didn't do anything wrong, and they did. Uh, you know, they had they are material witness, and unfortunately, Neil. Uh, the, the congressman that you said that, that he was uh, saying that he was ashamed of the rioters. Uh, he had a totally different feeling on January 6th, but that's because he was scared. He was scared for his life. He was scared for this country. And the only person he knew at that time who was responsible, um, it was the mob and the former president who sent them over. Yeah, they really are shameful. That clip that I was looking for at the top was um, from last night where, where Biden called out these members of Congress for their responsibility to protect our nation from enemies, foreign and domestic. And so many in that body have either utterly failed and are unwilling to protect us from domestic enemies or they are domestic enemies themselves. It is unthinkable, the situation that we're dealing with. Um, but it, Go ahead. It's very, it's very uh, horrible that all the sacrifices that, that we did on January 6th yeah. to defend them, to protect them, to keep our country, uh, our very system of governance in one piece, uh, protect them from where they take the one to be. Um, you know, it, it's, they completely desecrating our efforts, our sacrifices. People die, officers die as yeah. a sort of uh, consequences of that day. And each and every time that they call them hostages or political prisoners or peaceful protesters. Then what do they think make us the police officers there on January 6th then? Were, were we the bad guys because we, we protect them? Were we the, the the person breaching the Capitol? We were actually protecting them from, from harm. And we were not doing it because we are a political party affiliated. We did it because it was our duty to do it. And if they don't want to see it that way, then that, that's on them. And unfortunately, they don't have no shame. They want to do anything in it within their power to remain in power and, and uh, all their party. And they're putting themselves above what's best for the country, no matter what. Yeah, they do. Absolutely. And speaking of you, um, your brave service that day, your fellow officers, the losses you suffered, um, we can never forget about Brian Sicknick and his family. And I know you tweeted out this week after um, after uh, McConnell's announcement that he was endorsing Trump, that the Sicknick family had refused to, was it shake hands with McConnell? Um, yeah. They they knew, they knew then. And 
it's very very telling and that was that was doing the presentation for the gold medal that a uh, uh, Congress uh, awarded us, the police officers, the first responders. Mitch yeah. um, McConnell, Kerry McCarthy, they, they went for the photo up, and I'm glad that the Signy family, they, they, they didn't shake hands, because if I were in line to do uh, to shake their hand, I would have done the same thing. Um, I know it was a uh, different uh, uh, as a ceremony, uh, and I should have had stay above the fray, but I felt the same way that uh, they did and glad they did it. Uh, it's very um, disheartening and, and a, a total betrayal by them to continue to downplay what happened in January 6, continue to say that the officers uh, were the one that, need, that should be investigated and, um, and prosecuted because we um, abuse our power in the line of duty in the, in, in, in the way that that we protected them, um, but they only do saying all those things because it, you know it reminds me of uh, the rule, uh, the rules of engagement. That this I think a, a movie yeah. that that they, you know you are enjoying the the you had the blanket of my security along those lines, and and now you questioning how how I do provide you that security, and they continue to 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 downplay that. And that's going to be detrimental to our country if we uh, if, if we don't uh, turn around and, and, and fix that. Because a lot of people continue to think that nothing happened January 6th, that it was a federal uh, operation. Uh, if it was, guess who was in charge of the federal government at that time? Donald Trump. Uh, I yeah. believe so, so. Yeah. I definitely want to talk a lot more about your experience that day and what we could be in for on that same day coming up in 2025. Um, plus just the complete, you know, embarrassment of a rebuttal from the Republican Party last night after this quick break. I've tried so many different things to maintain a heart healthy lifestyle like crash court diets or starting a daunting cardio routine. And frankly, it just hasn't been helpful for me. We often think living a more heart healthy life means making big unsustainable changes. But with Super Beats Heart Shoes, you can get daily blood pressure support in just two tasty chews a day. And they even promote heart healthy energy without the stimulants. Paired with a healthy lifestyle, the antioxidants in Super Beats are clinically shown to be nearly two times more effective at promoting normal blood pressure than a healthy lifestyle alone. Heart health is important for me because I want to be around as long as possible for my loved ones. Super Beats Heart Shoes gives me the peace of mind that I'm doing the right thing and doing something good for myself every day. I take Super Beats Heart Shoes every morning and after taking them, I feel like I have more energy to take on the day. Super Beats Heart Shoes are a convenient way to support healthy blood pressure. No pills to swallow, no ingredients to mix or prepare. It's plant-based and no artificial sweeteners or colors. I cannot recommend Super Beats Heart Shoes enough for our listeners. Double your potential with Super Beats Heart Shoes. Get a free month supply of Super Beats Heart Shoes on all bundles and a free full-size bag of turmeric chews valued at $25 with your order by going to lightsonbeats.com. We've got our own website, folks. Get this exclusive offer only at lightsonbeats.com, L-I-G-H-T-S-O-N-B-E-E-T-S.com. Thank you. Factor makes eating better easy and delicious. Their ready-to-eat meals are always very fresh, never frozen. Factor's chef-crafted, dietitian approved meals are ready to go in just two minutes. You'll have over 35 different options to choose from every week, including My Choice Vegan, plus Vegetarian, Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, Keto, and many more. Also, there are more than 60 add-ons to keep you satisfied all day long. What are you waiting for? Get started today. Factor is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast premium options with no cooking required. With Factor's restaurant quality meals, you have high quality food that's ready to eat in two minutes wherever you are with no prep and no mess to clean up. Factor also has a wide variety of easy options for the entire day, like breakfast, midday bites and smoothies, and much more. And it's flexible for your schedule. You can get as much or as little as you need by choosing your meals every week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. So sign up and save. 
I've done the math. Factor is way less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. Head to factormeals.com slash lights50 and use code lights50 to get 50% off. That's code lights50 at factormeals.com slash lights50 to get 50% off. So I don't know if you know this, Aquilino, but um, before I took a sharp right turn to work for the Trump campaign, I am and was an actress. <laughs> and uh, it was kind of always a very um, contradictory experience for me because I love my field. I am first and foremost an artist at heart. And I would still be sucked in by this right wing propaganda that was constantly railing against everybody in Hollywood, you know, the leftist Hollywood elites. And what I have come to realize is that they are so desperately jealous of Hollywood. And all that any of these Republican politicians ever wanted was to be actors and actresses. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> and um, I don't think we could ever see a better example of that, as pathetic and awful an acting job as it was, uh, than last night with the Republican rebuttal by Katie Britt. Um, I think we're all expecting an SNL skit to come of this, but let's just play a short clip of this rebuttal for our viewers. <laughs> I never could have imagined what my story would entail. To think about what the American dream can do across to just one generation in just one lifetime. It's truly breathtaking. But right now, the American dream has turned into a nightmare for so many families. The true unvarnished state of our union begins and ends with this. Our families are hurting. Our country can do better. Okay, Katie. I don't know, it, it sounds like, sound like we are I'm gonna die, you know, the whole country is going to pieces. Uh, I don't know, I don't know. I, the thing is like, they, they, they're not even pretending to want to govern. They just want power back, no matter what. It doesn't matter how they get it. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, how they portray people, how many people get hurt. Because, you know, again, with the border thing, it's an emergency. It's been an emergency for the past three years. It has been an emergency last week. It has been an emergency for since 1994, uh, you know, or before that in the 60s. And now that you have the opportunity to actually do something about it, you know, it's better than not doing anything or nothing like they claim that uh, the president is doing or has been doing. They rather say, you know what? It's an emergency, but we're going to wait until after the election in January next year. Um, so uh, Lakin, uh, Riley uh, family, you know, there might be more people uh, killed by them. Uh, so we could use them. So it's always an excuse. They, they would pretend to be care about people or, or things, uh, but it just to let the outrage. Uh, and, and that performance last night, I, I, like I told you earlier, um, I started watching the first two minutes. I'm like, ah, uh, thanks for me to change the channel. So because to me, there was no substance, there was no delivery. And I know that the, half of the things that she probably said, because I, uh, I'm assuming, because I didn't listen to the whole thing, uh, I'm assuming those were lies as well. And, and that would just potentially, uh, saying the same thing that the former president says that our things are happening and which is not true yeah like you said manufactured outrage um um instead of real outrage about the man who they defend possibly turning us into a dictatorship yeah. um with complete lack of sincerity and genuineness i i just wanted to read some of what i thought were the best reactions to this from from twitter uh joy behar said why does Katie Britt go from smiling to being on the verge of tears and then back to some scary Stephen King character? <laughs> Andrew Weissman said, Katie Britt runs the gamut of emotion from A to B. Uh, Tom Arnold said, Katie Britt is so bad she couldn't be in one of my movies. And one of the most substantial and significant, I thought, was from Shannon Watts. She said, Senator, uh, Senator Katie Britt says sexual assault is the worst thing that can happen to a woman 
while encouraging Americans to vote for a convicted sexual predator. I mean, and there you have the irony right there. You know, yep. it's it's fine as long as it's not me. It's fine of them doing it. Uh, we doing it as long as it's not to me. And that's the selected outreach that I'm talking about. They only care about the other uh, m murderers. They only uh, the other people who die of, of from uh, of illegal immigrants. The other uh, cases in courts. As long as it's the other party that they want to prosecute and and, and, and point out to, um, is when it comes to to them, to the their party members. I mean, heck, you have even have George Santos on the in the audience, um, a froster. You know, uh, you know, it, it's how can you continue to support all these people? You claim to be the the law and order party. The rule of law, you support the police, but yet the minute that the police says, Well, this person assaulted me, then you will cry and file, or oh, don't you know they're the victim that the attack is the victim, not 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 it's it's very, very disingenuous of them. And uh I don't know, I don't know, it's it's hard to believe them anymore. Yeah. You how many years did you work as, as a capital police officer at Kilino? Uh, six, 16 and a half, uh, almost 17. Wow, almost 17 years you were guarding that building um, yep. with these people passing through. Of course, we've got your book up there, American Shield. It's a wonderful story that I read um, about Aquilino's journey from um, the Dominican Republic to America, to the army, and then of course to that fateful day on January 6th. Highly, highly recommend it. It's also in Spanish. Um, but what, I mean, I just want to know, like, what do you feel viscerally when when you worked in those hallowed halls, and you see the people that have been able to take these oaths and take in those those what should be solemn positions of public service, um, filling the halls of Congress? I mean, I do miss working at the Capitol. Um, you see these these uh, medals uh, medals behind me. Those are badges from barriers um, um, stage in my life uh, being as a police officer uh, sergeant inauguration uh, so there are a lot of things a lot of memories that, that I have in there the building itself is a museum but it's a historical museum every single detail that is in there has been thought out completely uh, and it means something so I, I enjoy finding out reading about those things in terms of the Electoral officials themselves, like I say uh, in my uh, book, American Shield, you know, it's uh, very disappointing. I mean, I, I always thought the uh, the elected officials, no matter what party they belong to, they will take their awful office uh, seriously uh, and put the benefit of the country ahead of themselves and the party. And unfortunately, the, the uh, Republican Party is no longer the Republican Party. It's uh, the the party of a convicted felon, uh, a rapist, you know things like that. So somebody who has been indicted four times, and look what he did today. His his um, daughter, I believe, um, she's taking over the uh, RNC. You know, so it, it, everything that he touches, he's gonna take money out of that, and then destroy and leave it uh, destroying ruins uh, like his businesses back back in the days. Um, they claim that he wins. Uh, how many uh, elections has he uh, won uh, since he became a political uh, candidate? Um, he lost the House, he lost the Senate, he lost the presidency, he had lost special elections, he had lost uh, more than 60 cases in court to overturn the elections of 2020. Uh, he incited the violence, he has been convicted of multiple. Uh, crimes, uh, financial crimes, uh, assaults, uh, and th that's, o that's only the beginning of a lot of things that are coming his way. Uh, but yet they continue to support him no matter what. Um, for what reason? I don't know. Maybe they, he has dirt on them and they are afraid that they will expose him. Are they afraid of being blackmailed by Donald Trump? Big, big question out there, huh? I think so. I mean, I mean, when you have Mesh McConnell, um, who 
often Donald Trump call, call some names and things like that, or make fun of his wife, uh, or really call her racial slurs. But then again, uh, you know, he did the same thing to Marco Rubio, uh, Ted Cruz, and look how they are now. They uh, licking his boots. Um, yes. uh, if not, if if not that, something else, because. Um, they have no shame. As long as they 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 in power, they don't care who he hurts. As long as it's not them themselves being hurt by his policies and and uh, his behavior. And yet he will turn on them, and he will hurt them in a heartbeat when it comes to benefit him. I, I think uh, I think Michael Cohen said it uh, right during his uh, congressional uh, hearing, where uh, Michael Cohen, I think he he, he you know paraphrasing, um, he said everything that Donald Trump touches uh, and, and whether you are a person with good integrity, by the time he, he's done with you, you don't have no integrity. And that's exactly what uh, uh, Mark Cohen did. He he did everything that Trump used to tell him to do and he ended up going to jail because of that. And the minute that Trump didn't need him anymore, he threw him out under the bus and uh, now he calls him a liar opportunists and uh, a lot of other things uh, and, and you know it, it's you only good for him until he doesn't need you anymore and the minute that you say i uh, send it up to him then uh, you no longer useful so i call them the use useful idiots yeah yep it's it's a similar message that i've been putting out for years and that's that once your interests no longer align with donald trump um you will just like you said, be thrown under the bus. Um, mm -hmm. So distance yourself now. But you know, you contrast what you're talking about, Aquilino, with um, the money that is going to be raised for Donald Trump under the leadership of his daughter, Lara. Oh my God, her daughter-in-law. Um, it's really, I mean, it's, this is really like an oligarchy. It's this is not a democracy. I'm um, at least on the Republican side. The I mean, are these, loud. These, these are his uh, idols. All these. Uh... Oligarchs, the all these, uh, yep. pariahs. Yep. I mean, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think he invited uh, Orlan, um to Big Guarani. Orlan from so he, he's a dictator in another country, and this is the people that he associate wants to associate. Oh, were you with. saying Erdogan? Erdogan from Turkey? Yeah, Erdogan yeah. from uh, uh, Europe. Turkey. I forgot. Yeah. From, no, not Turkey. Uh, uh, Belarus, I think it is. If I'm not mistaken. Okay. Uh, but you know, he he praises Putin. He praises uh, Kim Jin, Jinping. Uh, he praised uh, uh, the dictator from uh, North Korea, Kim Jong Un. Uh, so yeah. Kim Jong Un. So there's a lot of uh, this, the, these are the type of people that he associates himself with. And uh, I know I'm surprised he doesn't um, idol Maduro uh, since he he likes his strong men. And Maduro has been powerful for so long. Uh, but I guess it's not beneficial to him because, I mean, it is beneficial not to align himself because um, people from Venezuela like coming here illegally like, to the border. But, you know, that's, that's uh, I mean, not illegally, uh, through a portion of entry, um, yeah. you know, but these are the type of people, nevertheless, that he associates with himself with. 100%, 100%. I'm just, I'm just waiting. Each I'm just one waiting. I'm waiting for him to to say something nice about Fidel Castro now. <laughs> hey, if it if it benefits him, if and when it benefits him, he will he will do it. But um, you know, you talk about all of these dictators, and all of these dictators have basically turned what, in some cases, started off as democracies, like in the case of you know Hungary and this this um, obsession the GOP has with Viktor Orban. Um, you know, he was elected to power, but he has turned Hungary into, a, yeah, he was elected and he, he has turned Hungary into a political structure where him and his sycophants, his enablers are the ones that are financially benefited. It's right in line with this appointment of Laura Trump to the head of the RNC where the, you know, all the money can go to Trump. And you look at this, um, service to Trump, contrast it with the service to the American people that Joe Biden highlighted last night. He rightly described our economy as the envy of the world. I can attest to this from friends of mine who come from other countries. I was talking to one just the other night and he said he was planning back 
in 2020 or 2021 to go to maybe Italy or somewhere else in, in Europe. And, and he said, you know, manufacturing's all back in the US. The jobs are all back in the US. And that's why he came here instead. Um, Biden touted the record, 15 million jobs created in three years, unemployment at a 50 year low, record jobs for blacks, Hispanics and Asians, 800,000 new manufacturing jobs, racial wealth gap is the smallest it's been in 20 years, inflation's on the decline from 9% to 3%, which is much as it seems like sometimes for us is still the lowest in the world after this recovery from COVID. Um, this is a president who is using the economy to serve the people contrast it with what Trump and his sycophants and enablers would do to use the economy to benefit themselves. Well, this is coming from the same person who was praising, uh, hey, look at the stock market, all time high. Look at the stock market, all time high. I'm doing good. I'm doing great. Look what I've done. Look what I've done. And now that Biden does the same thing or higher, uh, the stock market goes even higher than his predecessor. Now he said, oh, it's, it's only going up because they they, they think I'm going to win. So he even taking credit now for things that he hadn't done. Um, you know, growing up, as I mentioned in my book, American Shield, it, it was challenging for me to find a, a job. And I went from work to work, different uh, small jobs and or opportunities. And that's what's great about this country. And that's one of the things that I wanted to do uh, when, uh, by, when I was able to, because uh, when I first came here, I didn't, I struggle. I struggle with financially. I struggle with the language. I struggle to uh, assimilate to this country. And when I had the opportunity to uh, become better, I did. I I, I did better in my school uh, with the help of uh, a program that used to be called Open Bound. I'm, I'm not sure if it's still available, but it, it helps uh, a lot of uh, marginalized students at that time. Um, you know, that's what Biden is talking about, like helping the, those communities. And when I, after I graduated from, from high school, I joined, uh, I went to college. Well, because I couldn't pay for college, I joined the military for, for three things. One, to give back to uh, this country. Two, I had uh, a, not a so good relationship with my family, uh, with my dad. And so I needed to escape pretty much uh, to be before it gets uh, conflicted. But the third one was mainly to give back to this country uh, for giving me the opportunity to, to be who I'm, I am today. Um, and I was willing to put my life on the line. I did that on, uh, when I was deployed to Iraq for one year. Uh, a lot of things happened in Iraq, which is also in my book. Um, when I came back, I finished my education. I joined the military, uh, the police department, and I continue my service to this country as a public servant for 17, uh, almost 17 years. And although I'm not a police officer any longer, because I, uh, I was separated in uh, December 2022, I continue to go to court. Uh, just recently, uh, last week, I went. I was in court giving testimony to the events of January 6th, where um, many of the people who assault me continue to be processed through the court system. Uh, yesterday, I, I was called about a plea deal of another rioter that assaulted me. Overall, has been more than a, a 40 rioters who assaulted me on January 6th, and I had done at least 20 um, uh, court cases and, and testimony or not. So it's January 6th, it, although it has been three years, uh, still uh, very much part of your life. Uh, it's continued to be with me. It continue to have to be part of my life, whether I want to or not, because I want them to be um, uh, those people who assaulted me be held re responsible and accountable for what they did, not only to me but uh, to our country. Yeah, I know you want them to be held accountable, and I know you want their ring leader to be held accountable. And we're going to talk some more about his Trump's legal woes on the other side of our last quick break. My family means the world to me. The things we build our future around are the things worth protecting. Making an estate plan now means gaining security of your assets and peace of mind for you and your loved ones. With trust and will, you can create and manage a custom estate plan starting at just $199. Go to trustandwill.com slash lights for 10% off 
plus free document shipping. I know that estate planning through other means can be a grueling process and often cost thousands of dollars, but Trust & Will makes it super simple and streamlines the entire process from A to Z. Trust & Will's website is incredibly easy to navigate and the process is very straightforward. And one of the best parts is that after working with Trust & Will, you'll have peace of mind that your assets and wishes are secure. Trust & Will has simplified the process of creating and managing your will or trust online from finding out what's right for your family to finalizing documents with a notary. Ensure your family and loved ones avoid lengthy, expensive legal proceedings or, God forbid, the state deciding what happens to your assets. Trust & Will has made estate planning accessible and affordable. Live customer support is available through phone, chat, and email. Trust & Will is trusted by hundreds of thousands of families and counting. So secure your assets and protect your loved ones with trust and will. Get 10% off plus free document shipping of your estate plan documents by visiting trustandwill.com slash lights. That's 10% off and free shipping at trustandwill.com slash lights. So Aquilino, earlier you were talking about how horrific it is that Donald Trump may soon receive security briefings again because he is the um, presumptive candidate for the Republican Party. Um, this is a tradition that has been going on since, uh, what is it, 1952? Um, but it would be the first time an administration, in this case the Biden administration, has volunteered to share classified information with a candidate who is facing criminal charges literally relating to the mishandling of classified documents. I, for one, genuinely hopes that, or genuinely hope that the Biden administration reconsiders this decision. It's it's mortifying. Um, but at the same time, you've got Trump down in Mar-a-Lago trying to pull this same presidential immunity stunt that he pulled in DC, um, arguing this before a much more sympathetic judge. Um, and Jack Smith fired back this week saying that this this effort was frivolous and outlandish. Um, he said, on Trump's reading, a departing president could unilaterally convert classified records, government records containing the nation's most closely guarded military, diplomatic, and national security assets into his private possessions, leaving the government with no judicial recourse to recover its own property and protect the nation from the risk that the former president may disclose these secrets to a foreign adversary, post them on the internet, or sell them to the highest bidder. Um, and he said it's difficult to understand this immunity bid as anything other than a strategic effort for delay. Um, it really is kind of unbelievable that this guy who confiscated and stole our national security secrets, including nuclear, um, nuclear secrets to his golf course, the bathroom of a golf course uh, and banquet hall in Florida is, um, both the Republican candidate looks like at 100% and going to be receiving classified briefings again. It, it's uh, very scary because I think that's one of the reasons why uh, doing the, by the time, around the time where uh, the FBI was uh, searching Mar a Lago, there was a flood. Yeah. Flood, yeah. You know? Um, was that intentional to fry the, the, the electrical system for recording or damage the documents so it wouldn't be uh, readable? Um, you know, sharing the documents uh, between the uh, president and the presumptive nominee, uh, those are tradition. But well, guess what? The foreign president, he doesn't care about tradition. He, he wants to do whatever. Yeah. Yeah, no kidding. Okay. So I don't. So I don't think that you know because of tradition, he should. This should have uh, should be done. I think the the Biden administration needs needs to confer with his legal team, legal counsel, and decide whether what's best for this country, Absolutely. and then and then tell the uh, Senate uh, intelligence uh, uh, of A. I believe that's what it's called um, to to let them know why. So, such information cannot be shared with this guy because he had shown that he's going to misplace it or that he's going to mishandle it. Uh, and he doesn't have no regard to the security of this country. A perfect example is during six, when you had the uh, elected officials, uh, the vice president of his own party, 
his daughter, his wife, the nuclear codes, the speaker of the house, uh, and the sen uh, Senate pro temper. And these are the next three people in line to the presidency. And guess what he did? Instead of uh, sending the carvery, instead of sending uh, a system to quell the violence, he incited the violence. He uh, sent the mob to attack the Capitol. He, the mob, the mob became, uh, uh, became to chant, hang my pence. Not hang with my pence. There's a sort of difference. Yeah. Hang my pence. <laughs> Definitely not hang with him. Definitely not. You know, and, and, and if it wasn't because of our efforts, uh, yeah. they would have succeeded, along with killing uh, um, many of uh, elected officials. And, and, uh, and they did succeed in, in um, unthinkably killing, you know, Donald Trump's own supporters. I, I pointed this out last time we had you on. I always do that he led his own supporters to their death on January 6th. He caused the unthinkable suicides of, of your fellow officers and the, the aftermath of January 6th. He, of course, caused the death of Brian Sicknick, for which there is an ongoing wrongful death um, lawsuit. Uh, the, the damage this man has done cannot be overstated. Um, the, shout the, out irony, yeah. the irony of, of, of these people supporting him is that they think I'm less likely to jump in into a house of fire, in a, in a house of fire than Donald Trump. They see Donald Trump as being the person that is going to come in and rescue them. Yeah. And if you look at his history, he more like, he's more likely to pour more gasoline and gaslight even further the fire uh, than me not going in. I'll, I'll risk my life to protect you. I'll, I've done that. I've shown that. Uh, both overseas uh, with my fellow soldiers and also here in the United States at the Capitol. And to think that they think that he's their champion, that he's their hero, that he's going to come in and uh, sully himself because that's, he's a German phobic. He's not going to go into a fire. Uh, you know, he only cares about his own hide. Uh, he doesn't care about you, you, your family, your safety. And if he did, he, would, uh, he wouldn't have sent those people over to the Capitol uh, to do his duty. He would have done it himself. Absolutely. Um, as, as I'm listening to you, Aquilino, I'm reading some of these comments and we're going to open up just a minute for questions for Aquilino. Shout out to everybody um, with these, these great takes on, on our discussion today. Um, I definitely agree, Brett, with that uh, quote from Second Thessalonians applying to Donald Trump, the son of perdition. Um, but let's, uh, let's open up the chat to questions for Aquilino. Um, I'm really curious to know what you would like uh, him to answer. Um, you know, I, I, I'll maybe just start it off. I'm, I really think there's a possibility, especially because of this, um, decision out of the Supreme Court reversing Colorado decision that we could, we could be in for another January 6th. I mean, aren't we being incredibly short-sighted to think that the scenario could not, could not happen again? Um, I mean, part of it is like, look, the, the Republicans say, you know, or the former president say, you need immunity, total immunity to do whatever he wants to do. But what he's not thinking is, oh crap, if Biden gets the same type of immunity that I want myself to have, wouldn't he be able to do the same thing that I did and get away with? On January 6th next year, would he be a com or the Republican party, would they be comfortable with Joe Biden doing the same thing that Donald Trump did on January 6th? Send the mob of Antifa, send the mob of uh, uh, Democratic supporters to the Capitol and stop the steal or stop the transfer of power. Would they be okay with that? Or would they be okay with Kamala Harris not certifying the result because she doesn't like uh, or, or Biden told her uh, that the, 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 the uh, ele uh, election certification should be sent back to to the states, would they be comfortable with that? And I doubt that they would. Um, so it's, it's, they need to think really hard on what they wish, or wishing because they might get it. 
hundred percent. They better watch what they wish for. Okay, here's a couple questions from the audience. Um, one that I saw a version of earlier too. Um, are, how are you doing? Just how are you doing? Do you do you deal with PTSD from January six? How are how are you, Becky? Um, well, as I as I mentioned in the book, American Shield. It's uh, I I used uh, basketball as a way for me to cope with my PTSD. I had done that since I came back from the uh, Iraq War. Uh, and that helped me. The, the only thing was like on January 6, I was injured on my foot and then on my, and, and also on my shoulder. So it was kind of like a long process for me to get back to that level. But I'm um, fortunately, the physical um, uh, injuries have healed to the best of, of my ability. I still have some restriction on it, but I'm still able to, uh, I'm able to, to play basketball. I'm able to I uh, do exercise and go back to somewhat my normal routine prior January 6, um, which has allowed me to heal uh, tremendously. Yeah, I definitely re recommend reading American Shield to really walk through that what what Aquilino went through on the day of January 6th and in the aftermath you just just he describes you know when he came home in the early morning of January 7th and was just kind of coming to terms with what he went through that day it's it's really quite a read and um how it how it impacted your life in so many ways um I I wish you I wish you and your family continued healing and I I think I said this to you last time you were on but um, I think your your outspokenness um, and your act, act being active in this fight for democracy is is a huge part of that healing. Thank you. I mean, it helps because I know when I was quiet uh, those months after I, uh, my surgery, uh, it was tearing me apart. Like not being able to talk, not able to tell people what happened. Um, uh, thanks for for referring to the book is also available in the audio version if you feel like driving and listening at the same time instead of reading that's is a great re, uh listening uh but i did all those things on january 6 and, and in the past uh, as a soldier not because i wanted any medals or awards but because it was my duty and if and there are anybody there is anybody who thinks otherwise they don't know me they don't know anything about my character uh, or anything that I had done for that matter. Because I think if it wasn't because January 6th, nobody but my family and myself would know that all these medals behind me, uh, I had, uh, all these accomplishments I had done for this country, uh, all sacrifices, only me and my family would have known about those things. Uh, but because I, I'm outspoken, because I continue to go to court, because I continue to be involved with some of these cases on January 6, whether I want to or not, by choice or not, I was uh, put in this situation. Um, people who attacked me around me on my career, people who attacked me uh, thought that I would remain silent, and I didn't. I continue to attest to what happened. Um, if you go to my Twitter account, you're gonna see uh, uh, on, on my pin pictures, there's like four different collages of the things that I did on January 6, and those are the only, the, few, uh, the things that are known, but I know I did a lot more than just those collage uh, moments in time. Um, yeah, absolutely. We definitely follow um, Aquilino on Twitter. One question in here, which is a small question, is are you are you on any other platforms? Let me couple that with this other question, which is, did you or other police notice the coordination that is evident from seeing the videos of the insurrection? Not at that time. I think at that time uh, we were practically just surviving. Uh, we were overwhelmed uh, yeah. from the mob. So, uh, like I know, looking back in some of the videos, you see people having coordinating or giving orders or stacking uh, formations, mm -hmm. whatnot, or attacking in uniform. Uh, the only time that I think I remember. Um, Figure it out. Okay, this is now becoming more coordinated. Was in the inside the tunnel where I was, where I ne nearly died, uh, being trampled or being uh, pulled to the to the mob like they did to Mike Fanon. Uh, as a matter of fact, he he relieved me, and by the time I came back to the front, he was already taken out. So he, uh, I feel bad because had I stayed there, then nothing would have happened to to Fanon. 
uh, the survival guilt is still with me. But in that moment inside the, the, the tunnel, um, first it was chaotic, uh, everybody for themselves, but then you have uh, the coordination, like everybody working in unison to push the officers away from the door. And uh, then again, we were trying to work in unison to push, repel them out and push them out to a point we did push them out of, out of the tunnel. Uh, but then we lost ground. That's where uh, we, we lo uh, I got injured a couple of times. Uh, but, you know, nobody that we did not let in through that entrance came in. Uh, yeah, there was way, like, as you mentioned, I mean, the, the, the responsibility that was put on police officers that day was unthinkable. This was a job for an army yeah. and it was and, put on a, a, a two um, police forces. And, and, I, I and, and here's another thing. And here's another thing, like in that tunnel, uh, not to, you know, to, to be hyperbolic about it, but at that time, I didn't know, and most of the officers in that area, roughly about 40 of us, we didn't know that there were all the breaches around the cap right. or the other entrances. So to us, to me, I'm like, I'm staying here no matter what. I'm I'm, I'm going to defend this, this entrance, and right. that meant to... Uh, give up my life which i almost did um, i was resigned to do that uh, and a lot of people continue to criticize me for what what crying on tv but guess what i think if you if you would have gotten your ass beaten by more than 40 people injured hurt yeah. um on one day in the span of four hours you'll be crying too oh um, you know uh, hey hey that's not that's a sign of strength not weakness <laughs> Um, but, yeah. you know, I'm over that. I'm over that. It's yeah. been three years. Uh, you know, I uh, through my mental health treatment, I have overcome some of those emotions. Yeah. Now, st there's still uh, residue of those uh, traumatic events in my life. You know, I deal with, with the best I can. So, in one of those ways is playing basketball and, and exercising. Nice. Nice. Well, speaking of running <laughs> running in basketball are you are you planning on running for anything like mr harry dunn that's one of the questions um i, I haven't slammed the door shut but you know i i think i have if anything i have to if i'm going to do i have to convince my wife and until then uh, i'm not i'm not doing anything of those uh things i just wish him well um maybe perhaps in the future but uh right now with my family situation uh, i think i think it's it's not conducive Okay. But you know, uh, things Never could change. I hope. I hope that Harry Dunn uh, campaign is a successful, and then maybe I'll cons reconsider. Okay. Well, la última vez hablamos un poco en español y nos dio un mensaje para votantes latinos. Um, last time, uh, translation, last time we spoke a little bit in Spanish and you gave a message to um, to Spanish speaking voters. Um, one of the questions is in that line, have you ever considered a Spanish language podcast um, or any kind of, you know, broader Spanish language outreach? Um, I had done interviews in to Telemundo and in Eurovision, but uh, podcasts I, I had not done. Uh, if you know any, or you want to do it in Spanish, I'm more than likely. I think willing. they're asking if you might start your own. <laughs> uh, oh, I, I don't know. I, I I'll have to get with you and and then yeah. uh, you can coach me <laughs> well, right. how to how to do those things because I, I I don't. I maybe that, maybe. Started. I was just like, we're actually coming up on the one year anniversary. Next week is our one year anniversary, and I just threw myself into it. I had no idea what I was doing. I was just like, okay, lights on, here we go. <laughs> there you go. So so I don't know. I I'm, I'm currently a. Uh, working on my resume, um, you know, I'm trying to figure out what to do with the rest, the rest of my life. I had not used my resume since 2003, so there's it's a lot of things I have to change, and uh, things have changed. So I'm, I'm maybe uh, being a podcaster is something that I might be uh, uh, entertained. But I gotta get your your advice and how how things <laughs> work, and then perhaps uh, I'll make it work. Hablamos, we'll talk, we'll talk. But <laughs> sí. you know, it's uh, uh, I say español, I'm español, me bien in español. Um, soy dominicano, uh, el libro también está en, en español. Si lo quieren escuchar en español, se llama Escudo Americano, el sargento inmigrante que defendió a uh, democracia. And you know, it, it, it's, I, I hope that 
that the Spanish Latino community, they see the rhetoric coming from the Republican side as well, because they want to deport you uh, and your family and your friends back to wherever you came from. That's where they're worse. Um, they don't want you here. They don't want us immigrants here. They think we are taking their jobs, taking their livelihood, taking their lives. Um, not seeing the contribution like I had done it myself. Uh, you know, I, I came here early age. Uh, I learned the language. I came legally. I joined the, the uh, I became a productive member of society. Uh, I got in an education. I joined the police. I joined the military. Uh, I continue to defend this country no matter what. I continue to be advocate about law and order and our democracy. So there's a lot of things that I had done that if the Republican side would probably would see or say, okay, who do we need to highlight as a perfect example of uh, a immigrant that we want in this country? That would have probably reached out to me, but they don't because I'm not. Uh, no, they want to. They want to use false statistics. They want to exploit what they call angel moms. And I even got to know these people in the 2016 campaign. It's very sad, as Biden called out the, um, you know, the woman's name last night who was killed. They want to exploit these families who have suffered by yeah. crimes from undocumented when they don't want to tell you the facts that there's many, many, many more crimes committed by yeah. legals in this yeah. country undocumented yeah. and so yeah. they just exploit these very tragic situations for their own gain and but, like you said this this vile rhetoric that biden called out last night of poisoning the blood when yeah i mean look at, look at the uh the right. irony <laughs> look at the irony i'm yeah. a foreigner somebody who is not born here in this country a naturalized citizen i'm defending i defended the capital jerry six from yeah. native born citizen who wanted to in the very same system of governance of this country yeah. for a person. Not because the country is being overran by a foreign uh, entity or a, a, an invasion of uh, Russians or uh, Chinese or Canadians. No, because Donald Trump told them to rush to the Capitol, break and stop the transfer of power. Yeah. And immigrants like me, there's a lot of officers who are immigrant uh, on the Capitol Police Force. It's a diverse force. Um, we defended the Capitol from native born citizens. And that tells you a lot. Yeah. But to them, uh, we just, uh, um, you know, uh, crisis actors, not, not somebody who defended and, and did everything possible to defend that country. Yeah, you clearly were not crisis actors. And if you extend that irony, you say Russia and China is not invading, but they actually are. Russia is actually infiltrating and influencing the Republican Party. They have been since 2016 or before. Um, and, you know, it's not about your bloodline. It's about your spirit. Do you embrace the American spirit as you have or do you embrace the dictatorial Russian autocratic uh, spirit? as this GOP party and led by Donald Trump does um, anything but America first. Aquilino Gonell, a true American hero. Um, thank you so much for joining me again today on Lights On. Well, thank you for having me back in your show and uh, let me know whenever you want me back. I'll be happy to. For your audi uh, audience, uh, please uh, check out my book. Book is available both in Spanish and English um, and in both uh, text and text and also uh, in audio version. Uh, if you do, uh, I think you will find it uh, very uh, satisfying to read, uh, to know the, my story. And also please review it because that will go a long way uh, to yes. other people. Review it for him, that really helps. <laughs> so we'll end on that note, American Shield, check it out wherever you get your books or Escudo Americano en Español. Um, thank you so much everybody for joining us today and participating, especially in the end in this live chat. Um, as always, you can support this show also by leaving us a review um, wherever you get your audio podcasts. Um, just look for Lights On with Jessica Denson. That really helps us too. And um, subscribe to Jessica Denson to see all of these live shows as well as other special episodes like the Trump disqualification um, episode that I um, mentioned earlier. Um, and as always, if you would like to support my ongoing legal battle, we would love that. And we really do need your support. This is a genuine effort, unlike the fraud that Donald Trump is raising money for um, to 
defend his criminality, you can support our legal efforts to hold Trump accountable at thejessicadenson.com slash donate, thejessicadenson.com slash donate. Thank you, as always, so much for that support. Hey, everybody, you know, after this week, I just felt obviously disgusted in the beginning of the week with the Supreme Court ruling, but so inspired and fired up and energized to really take on this fight that is right before us right now. Um, we've got this and how blessed we are to be living in a moment in history when we can defeat these fascist forces. Um, all right, everybody, thanks so much. As always, let your light shine.